Isostasy describes vertical motion of the Earth's crust in response to changes in pressure due to climatic events such as glaciation, erosion, or sedimentation, and to tectonic activity such as the process of mountain formation. The Earth's crust is buoyant and floats on top of the mantle like a wooden block floats in water. Buoyancy is most widely understood in terms of displacement. When learning about buoyancy, we often analyze the behavior of a piece of wood placed into a container of water. The wood, which is less dense than the water, sinks until it displaces a volume of water equal to its mass. The wood floats because it is less dense than the water, so it stops displacing water before completely submerging. To understand how buoyancy relates to plate tectonics and the behavior of the Earth's crust, it helps to think about it from the perspective of the surrounding water. In a container with nothing but water, pressure is equal everywhere along the line near the bottom. Using the terminology from isostasy and plate tectonics, we can call a depth where pressure is equal the depth of compensation. And when pressure is equal at this depth, the system is in isostatic equilibrium. When a block of wood is placed on the water, the pressure below the block increases due to the added mass of the block pushing down. The system is no longer in isostatic equilibrium. As a result, water flows from the region of high pressure under the block to regions of lower pressure everywhere else in the container. As water flows out from under the block, the block sinks and pressure below the block decreases while pressure everywhere else increases. Water continues to flow out from under the block until the pressure is again equal everywhere along the depth of compensation. When pressure equalizes, water stops flowing, the block stops sinking, and the system is back in isostatic equilibrium. At a fundamental level, the behavior of the wood captures features of the Earth's surface, with lower density crust and lithosphere floating on denser mantle below. Buoyancy helps explain why continental crust, which is thicker and slightly less dense than oceanic crust, floats higher above the underlying mantle. Consider placing two blocks of wood in the water, one relatively thick piece and one much thinner piece. Both blocks displace water until the pressure is equal at a depth of compensation. When they both stop sinking, the taller block will have sunk deeper and still rise higher above the water. This is true if both pieces of wood have the same density. If the thinner block is slightly denser, it will sink even lower. The bimodal distribution of elevations along the Earth's surface is due to these differences between oceanic and continental crust. The higher peak is the average depth of the thicker, less dense continental crust. The lower peak is the average for the thinner, denser oceanic crust. If weight is added, pressure increases below the block, and water flows away until the pressure equalizes. To make this model of lower density material floating in water more like the Earth, we can remove the block of wood and think about the behavior of a large, flexible mat. When weight is added to the mat, the flexibility of the mat distributes the pressure across a large region. As a result, the area directly under the weight sinks the furthest, with less and less deformation occurring as we move away from the added weight. Depending upon the mat's stiffness, there may even be an area that rises up at some distance from the added weight. The study of how fluids and soft solids deform under pressure is called rheology. Studying the rheology of the crust and mantle helps explain these materials' responses to stress. The mantle is not a liquid like water, but it does behave like a fluid by flowing in response to changes in pressure. It is a very dense, highly viscous fluid, so it responds much more slowly than water, but it does flow. The crust is a malleable solid, which can flex in response to pressure, behaving similarly to the mat. External forces that cause the lithosphere to flex and the mantle to flow result in vertical displacement at the surface. Isostatic adjustments that cause the surface level to rise are called isostatic uplift. Lowering of the surface is subsidence. A climatic process that redistributes large amounts of weight across the surface of the Earth over geological time is glaciation. During the onset of an ice age, vast quantities of ice form. 16,000 years ago, the middle of the North Atlantic continent was weighed down with ice thousands of meters thick. This added weight caused the continental crust to sink and the surrounding area to rise. At the peak of the last ice age, the Hudson Bay region of Canada is thought to have sunk more than 400 meters below its current level. As the glaciers receded, the unloading of the crust caused isostatic uplift. Uplift is still happening now over 10,000 years later, and as the region that had been under the thickest glaciers rise, subsidence is still occurring in the surrounding area. A giant glacier sits on top of Greenland in the North Atlantic. 
The weight of over 2,000 meters of ice has pushed the crust low enough that the center of Greenland is below sea level. If all the ice were to disappear, seawater would rush in. The crust and mantle would rebound, but it would take thousands of years to reach isostatic equilibrium. During this time, the continent of Greenland would be underwater. Mountain formation due to tectonic activity, such as two converging plates crashing into each other, also stimulates isostatic compensation. During mountain formation, two converging plates push into each other, compressing the crust and causing it to thicken, increasing the ground elevation. As the crust gets thicker, the increased mass also causes it to sink deeper into the mantle, similar to how the tall block of wood sunk deeper into the water. The deep penetration of the crust into the mantle below a mountain is called the mountain's root. The final height of the mountain is determined by the thickness of the crust and how much underlying mantle material has flown away to reach isostatic equilibrium. Even after all tectonic activity has ceased, isostasy plays a role in maintaining the height of the mountain. As erosion removes material from the top, the crust becomes lighter. As a result, isostatic uplift occurs, causing the root to rise. Due to differences in the density between crust and mantle, there's about a four meter uplift for every five meters of height lost to erosion. This compensating uplift allows large mountain ranges to persist across geological time, even in regions with no tectonic activity. Isostatic adjustment ends when erosion completely removes the mountain and the crustal root rises until its depth matches the surrounding areas. Another situation in which loading the crust causes isostatic compensation is volcanism. The Hawaiian Islands are an example. Measured from the base of the volcano at the bottom of the sea, Mauna Kea is the tallest structure on Earth. The mass of this huge mountain sitting on the sea floor creates a depression around the island where weight of the volcano pushes down the surrounding crust. Changes in temperature of the lithosphere due to tectonic activity can also drive isostatic changes. Increased temperatures and the reduced density from thermal expansion cause isostatic uplift. This is a reason there is an increase in elevation along active ocean ridges. Further from the ridges, the lithosphere cools, making the rock more dense, resulting in subsidence. So far, we've been describing how knowledge of the crust and mantle composition helps explain their responses to stress. But the information flow goes the other way as well. Scientists can use observations about how parts of the Earth's surface respond to loading to infer information about conditions below the surface. Because regions of the lithosphere that are warmer, thinner, and less rigid will respond to stress by deforming faster, flexing more, and sinking further than thicker, cooler, and more rigid regions. It is important to understand that isostasy only describes vertical motion in response to pressure. As such, these movements are not the primary drivers of crustal motion. Isostatic adjustments always occur in response to other changes such as glaciation, erosion, sedimentation, or tectonic activity. But understanding the role of isostasy as a component of the Earth system provides insights into many of the long-term changes we see at the Earth's surface. If you found this video helpful, please consider sharing it and giving it a thumbs up. Feel free to comment with any questions or suggestions, and if you want to keep up with the content here at Science Primer, click the subscribe button. Thank you for watching.